At Anduril, you have to build something that is going to be pretty fast. Like you have to be able to get it out into the field quickly. You don't want it to be a science project. You know, the AI computer vision system, you know, the AI brain was the real product. You know, in 2024, you preach to tech entrepreneurs on how Jesus would approve of righteous AI weapons. It is a pretty godless city um, with, with a pocket of really strong believers and community. As you say, I'm uh, a very outspoken Christian, Protestant Christian. Do you get a lot of pushback for that or for being a Christian out there? Their lack of faith is just as much of a faith as mine. Like you have to be kind of crazy to believe that all of this came from, from nothing. Palantir, everybody's worried about it. Everybody's worried about, you know, are, are they spying on us? Is this gonna be the, the newest Patriot Act? What do, I mean, are they, are they spying on us? The misconceptions around Palantir are crazy. They're not bringing any data. The data belongs to the customer. It's just architecture for data management. You have to have some sort of software infrastructure that allows you to store data, search data, explore data, analyze data, you know, structure investigations around that data that are shareable with other people. And these are things that in any normal world, you would be like, yes, we want our warfighters to have the best tools that they can to do the job that we're asking them to do. And so I think a lot of the hysteria, like philosophically is really troubling because basically what people are saying is that we, a democratic society, have elected representative government to make decisions about how we should make decisions around the policies that we want to enact to protect our society um, in the national security context. But we don't want them to have the best tools to do it. We would rather them have crappy stuff that barely works. expressing a concern around democracy. They're saying, I don't believe that the American people can make good decisions about policies. Over the last four weeks, Peter has done an Act 17 series on the Antichrist, actually, in San Francisco. Yeah, I was gonna ask you about that. Did you did you go to that? Yeah, I was, I, was, I mean, my wife runs the organization, so Dude, yeah. how was it? Where does the misconception come from that they are spying on everything and everyone? But I think we're like programmed for hysteria. Joe Lonsdale had a great quote yesterday. He was talking about, you know, if you saw how the government managed data, you would want us in there. And he said, you know, we're the ones watching the watchers. I mean, what was the first product you guys wanted to develop? At Anduril, you have to build something that is going to be pretty fast. Like you have to be able to get it out into the field quickly. You don't want it to be a science project. And you want there to be a significant amount of political urgency around the thing that you're going to build um, so that you can drive a, a different kind of decision making rather than business as usual procurement policy.
the pilot can basically command a bunch of smaller aircraft that fly around it uh, to go and conduct different missions. So you extend sensor range, you extend shooter range, you basically can create a network around that manned aircraft. What does the future of warfare look like for you? Are we going all autonomous? Is our humans becoming obsolete? Humans make a lot of bad decisions. Yes, they do. Peter has been talking about these themes around the Antichrist for a long time. Um, during COVID, he and I did a uh, like a small group Bible study exploring the concepts around the Antichrist. It just seems to me that when you tell me a story mm -hmm. about the Antichrist coming to power and using the fear of technological change to sort of impose order on the world, I feel like that Antichrist would be maybe be using the tools that you yeah, that you were uh, that you were building. Yeah, there, there's the famous clip with uh, the interview with Ross Duthat where uh, Ross said something like, "Do you believe that humanity should continue to exist?" And he paused for an uncomfortable amount of time, <laughs> um, and then eventually said, "Yes." Yeah.